okay hello everybody good evening and uh, thanks for com coming to this uh, ambient intelligence course that we start today we will be together for the whole semester and hopefully have a good time uh, together and a lot of fun and a lot of work also and we hope uh, so basically uh, the, this first hour will be to introduce you to the topics of the course uh, to the kind of work uh, the orga organization of the work uh, that we are going to do in this course uh, and the practical issues and uh, to start thinking about uh, the um, the topic of the works uh, of the projects uh, uh, that uh, you will develop uh, during the semester uh, as you know because we already sent you uh, mails uh, and uh, other information uh, all the information that you need uh, all the documents uh, slides and whatever will be on this website so everything starts there hmm? will, be no, will, ne will not be the only place because we have a lot of other uh, services to uh, to connect to but that will be the starting point hmm? um, okay so i want first or well, before the boring official introduction i was i just want to give you a glimpse uh, of what we do in this course okay so this this set of images of ideas of flashes is what we want this course to be or to become first of all ami emit intelligence uh, is, a, is a, a project made of uh, a course made of projects we do projects here okay there won't be a lot of theory there won't be a lot of mathematics there won't be a lot of uh, other stuff to do there will be a lot of projects to de develop so basically the the gist of the course uh, and the path that we have to follow is the to build uh, your own projects during the course uh, uh, using the technologies and the uh, skills and the uh, information that we give you but in the end uh, we as a teachers uh, will be here to help you develop your project hmm? within a set of constraints of course hmm? so that would be the main topic the main goal and actually the only goal of the course uh, the course is teamwork okay no project can be done by a lonely person uh, both in terms of uh, complexity quantity of work to do and in terms of also uh, capability of uh, solving problems solving issues so today the work uh, that you are going to do into in the real world it will always be teamwork so the course uh, is organized around the teams of students uh, that are defined in the first weeks uh, and that uh, develop their project uh, uh, throughout the semester um, in this course we will play with technologies hmm? so we'll, we will uh, try hmm, to put together different kinds of technologies uh, that uh, uh, are used uh, for building uh, today's uh, intelligent environments uh, or intelligent ambience and so on so it will be uh, smart home devices will be sensors will be uh, programming boards uh, and uh, ranging from you know more hardware oriented technologies to more software oriented technologies just put together whatever it needs uh, whatever fits better the goal of your project this is uh, a uh, a big shift uh, compared to the other courses that you may have uh, had in the past um, in many courses we have a technology which is the main uh, the dominant theme the dominant topic and then you build some examples or applications of that technology but at the end you will learn to better know or to better use a given technology for us here technology is a commodity we use it if we need it we use uh, the technology that we need uh, for the project so one constant uh, work that we have to do will be to struggle not to choose the technology because we like it or because we already heard it or because you already know how to use it okay we choose to use you know uh, there are some pictures here of an arduino board for example not because we like arduinos but because in that project it's needed we need to do that in other cases uh, to, f to do some sort of sensing or actuation we just use maybe some commercial sensor we don't need to build our own 
Uh, so the idea is try to reason about the requirements of the project that we want to do and then select uh, the technology or the two or three or four technologies that are needed are the best suited for uh, uh, reaching those results and so the main effort will be that of integration not developing a new sensor or developing a new application or whatever but putting together something that is already existing so we try to build upon the competence the know-how that you have gained in your previous courses and try to put it together some software some database some web applications some uh, sensors some uh, low level programming some high level programming we put it together and we package it as a project as something that is working from end to end hmm? uh, of course for doing that we'll have to learn and use and fight uh, uh, with a lot of different tools so each of these icons will be probably one language or tool or environment or library that we will touch during the course we will use during the course okay um, if it seems scary uh, it is because the today's uh, you know i said you know computer science is generally a mix of different technologies you you, you are never so lucky to find a, a job in which you just need to know one language and you do all the work all your work in just one language or i hope you won't find one because then it would be a very sad work uh, a very boring one uh, today's applications with, that range from mobile and to to um, web application and so on already mix uh, different technologies different languages different way of designing hmm? so we will try to experience a bit of them so we will not become hyper experts in any of this but we'll try to learn to mix and merge them for the purpose of the project of course okay not all of these uh, technology will be used in every project because it depends on the project needs but more or less to give you the picture of what you're doing and then at the end uh, we want uh, we spent uh, we sweat for one semester uh, behind the project and then we want to show it um, we of course the first uh, chance uh, uh, you have to show the project is during the exam hmm? the exam of the course will be nothing more and nothing less than showing your project to the teachers in the lab in the same lab where we, you develop that so there's no written examination there's no uh no stuff to study or whatever just uh, show what you created and of course explain uh, the design choices the technologies and so on but the, the 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 exam would be actually explaining and showing the project and on on that you will get a score but since you we, you you worked so much on a project we will try to give you a chance to show you to, to show it sorry to the world to show them to show their your, your project to the world so every year we organize in a way or in a form or another uh, we still have to, to decide the details uh, a showcase probably some of you might might have seen the the designs or may even have uh, participated to some of them uh, where the the group of students uh, uh, we had them to, to to set up uh, some uh, uh, some sort of fair uh, where they can show every every project as a desk and they can show and people come in and try to see the project uh, uh, discuss them ask questions and so on hmm? uh this was one, an event that was organized independently here at the incubator the i3p incubator at the polytechnical last year we didn't go here we just joined another bigger um startup fair that was in torino it's called startup pato and uh, we just uh, exposed uh, showed uh, our project there so we don't have the details yet for 2018 but the idea is that every successful project uh, will have a chance to be shown of course it's not mandatory okay but i think it's a good opportunity for you to show your work uh, and to start uh, linking with the you know the your future employers probably hmm? or your future partners and uh, so we try also to link with the world of the world of startups uh, where you know um, companies that want to innovate want to meet uh, uh, smart people and want to show want to see what these smart people are doing are capable of doing uh, and so uh, 
uh, as, you know, as a teacher, I try to create this link between the startups, the companies, and the students. Uh, many of you will continue to study. Some of you will stop and seek a word, uh, so to uh, work somewhere. Uh, some of you will study while, while working. And so at this point, in your, some of you probably maybe want to have some stage in, uh, in the company. Uh, depends on every one of you have, have different plans for the future. Uh, I want to give the opportunity for you to start you now linking and knowing what is around us, at least in the ecosystem around this city. And uh, uh, we also try to do some noise uh, outside, so to go to the press. Uh, we also went to the television once and so on, uh, trying to tell what we are doing here at Torino with you students. Hmm? So uh, that, w that is the, the, the big picture. So it, very, it looks like a very nice party, but uh, it is probably. Uh, but before getting to the party, you have to prepare it. And, uh, and that's the, the more boring or no, the more uh, difficult part. So I will sh switch to a more <laughs> uh, serious way of the presenting here and try to present the technically, you know, the goal of, and the contents of the course. So yes, the idea is building projects, but projects about what? Projects about uh, intelligent environments. The title is ambient intelligence, giving intelligence to an ambient, to a space, to a place, okay? How? With technology, by enriching that environment with uh, sensors, with uh, actuators, with uh, interfaces, with devices, with algorithms, with actions uh, that uh, interact with the user occupy, uh, occupying that space and living that space and improving the experience of that person onto the space. Um, we'll try next uh, next class on Monday to go m deeply, more deeply in this definition to try to understand actually what is uh, an intelligent environment. An intelligent environment is not uh, a system that is, uh, you know, um, automatically regulates the temperature. That's not intelligence. That's a thermostat. Huh? Uh, or a place where uh, you just the, the lights are switched on when you enter like in the bathrooms here okay it's nice but it's not intelligent hmm? there's one sensor and 20 cents of wire to to create the system uh, that those systems work in a very predefined way in a very simple way and don't take into account actually the behavior of the needs of, or the needs of the user uh, we want call something intelligent we want that place to come forward to the user to do something that actually helps the user and every user is different so the system should in, in some way understand the user and react in a different way to different users and probably not even reacting but also proacting doing something be even before being asked okay so it's not just adding sensors and doing something when a sensor is triggered, but understanding the experience of the user and trying to build a system that will improve this experience. Hmm? This will be probably the main difficulty of the course, uh, thinking in this way, thinking about the user and not about the technologies. We are all engineers, we are happy to be engineers, but for the first month of this course, let's try to put aside the technology and think about the users how the users interact with an intelligent environment. So we try to reach this goal with a feature-driven design methodology. So uh, we don't know at the beginning which technologies we will use. Are we using, I don't know, Bluetooth sensor or a wire sensor? I don't know. And I don't want to ask myself this question about which technology or which kind of sensor I want to use until I understood what, which features the system as a whole needs to provide. Hmm? So starting about which are the features that we want to sell. Imagine creating, no, you go on any website to download the software or to buy a device. You are looking for the feature list what is device or what is the software doing 
this is will be the start, starting point for us then during the design process we will try to decide how to implement these features hmm? not the other way not the other way around we don't start from technology to build a system that does something but we start from the user understand what how we can help or improve the experience of the user and so which features are needed for helping the user and then okay the engineering work and the design work starts uh, for finding technical solutions in the least cost and least effort to implement all or most of those features uh, and for striving to the you know, least effort we will try to reuse uh, as much as possible existing devices existing libraries existing softwares existing cloud services everything that is existing so another instinct you should fight is to do everything by yourself of course every one of us is a mega genius and so we are capable of doing everything but if it's already done and it works uh, let's use it and let's put our effort in integrating and polishing and creating the, the application level okay so finally which are the components that do our job and try to integrate with them interface with them hmm? that's a, a new way of working compared to to other courses where you know you have to implement everything from the bit level up and um, and so we learn to interface since we need to do some sensing some actuations inside the environment uh, try to you to learn and to know the most common or some of the most common um, most popular building automation system or smartphone systems uh, to interact with instead of building our own hmm? and if we don't find anything of course we can build or we can implement some hardware but this is just the last resort hmm? okay so uh, the the final goal would be having a working system hmm? so this word here working uh, seems simple but actually is a challenge because it's always easy to put something together that doesn't work okay uh, but we want it maybe something simple with that okay we, we thought about 100 nice wonderful features we could implement only three but these three actually work okay this is the spirit we will s you all uh, very often try to limit your imagination say okay but can you think about something simpler uh, easier to do then if you have time you can always add new features in in, uh, in the second or third iteration but starting to have always the, the idea of something that should work hmm? it's not as easy as it seems and it requires time okay uh, you have more or less half of the time for building a system and half of the, of the time for making it work debugging thinking about strange cases uh, uh, solving issues that you didn't anticipate and so on will take nearly 50 percent of your uh, whole time in the project and uh, this is a general you know, approach for sorry to build a computer system or ict systems in particular we want to work in a specific domain which is that of ambient intelligence uh, i will just read the, this definition then the next class on monday will be of understanding it actually no? with example with the details and then with intelligence system is a digital environment that was technology comes that proactively but sensibly supports people in their daily lives so the key verb here is supports people supporting people people are the target of our um, of our projects of our devices um we need to support them if possible proactively so we have some intelligence so that we, we can understand the needs of the people even before proactively acting before even before they know it or even before they request or they ask for something but sensibly so mean probably means you have you must have an intelligent system that tries to understand the user but try to do that in a sensible way because having a system that will anticipate your action but will uh, 
anticipate it wrongly and so do something that you don't want to uh, is worse than having no system okay and so the difficulty is uh, putting the right amount of intelligence to do something useful and not pissing the user yeah, can i tell this word i don't know um so i'm not, do so much, not doing something against the user will this is the the kind of system we are that we are trying to design uh, as i said uh, we will uh, come again onto the definition to understand it better so actually what we have do we have users that are using one or more applications it would be a web application mobile application or whatever these applications uh, uh, control devices the devices could, could be sensors could be lights could be actuators could be sound actuators could be motors could be something that changed in some way the environment okay so the but the environment or the user is immersed in the environment so actually the actions of the user on the software system will modify the environment and this modification is perceived is felt is seen by the user and just the other way around if the user moves or do or does something in the environment then some sensors could pick up this action could sense this movement this action this uh, entering or leaving a room or asking something or making a noise or whatever could be sensed by the devices and so the applications could react to those changes to those user actions so actually the user is no longer just uh, interact with interacting with an application with on your computer or, or on their smartphone they are also interacting through the environment you know much more natural way you can interact with the system without having an explicit interface because the interface is the environment hmm? there's a philosophy behind that called the, the, the disappearing computer there will be computers everywhere but you won't see them Mm? because your actions your natural actions within the environment uh, will tell the computers what to do mm? and will improve uh, the behavior of the environment so this is the general framework in which we are going to work um, in this uh, topic we have a list of uh, different uh, chapters technical topics that we need to to, to deal uh, with uh, and um, you already have a list on the website uh, of the of the classes of the different lectures in the different weeks uh, so this is just a a, a short list uh, um, ranging from uh, programming languages uh, to knowing some technologies uh, uh, to do some labs and so on hmm? but uh, I, I won't i won't do them line by line so the approach will be always be mixing theory and practice and technology technology in uh, here we are trying i repeat uh, to integrate technology so technology is a given we don't want to develop uh, any new technologies we want to use existing technologies to create some to create something new but not at the technology level rather at the application at the user level okay there is already too much technology that is useless uh, we try to make the existing technology useful hmm? that is what we need today okay um, okay so uh, the the mixer will be theory and most of these uh, last points will be uh, working together working together in the lab in the LADISP lab, in the, during the, most of the Mondays will be in the lab, uh, and uh, by yourselves also, during the group work, uh, and some of the, group, of the group work will be in your free time, and some will be in the lab hours, uh, we see the detail, so that we can maybe help you and give you a feedback about what you are, to, what you are doing and so on. Mm -hmm. So the approach of the course will be really practical, hands-on, uh, on many cases there will be very few lectures uh, classical lectures where i speak and you listen 
and most of them will be also practical but at the same time uh, we'll not, uh, we try to follow a design methodology so not just doing what i have in mind uh, but uh, you can start implementing only when you have understood what you really have to implement not just i will start this because i like it okay mm, let's try to uh, fight this, this attitude or, or of jumping into something without having the the general picture clear enough hmm? um, okay so the uh, logistics and organization okay we have uh, we are three teachers i'm fulvio you will meet uh, uh, luigi on monday and uh, next monday in the second hour and you will meet uh, alberto in the lab uh, in the week after we will uh, rotate uh, in class uh, in lab so we'll see uh, the three of us uh, so in the 60 hours of the course more or less we will have uh, 20 hours each uh, so we are, it's uh, it's quite split huh? each one of us uh, is is aligned about ob the, obje the objective of the courses so the what what uh, whatever i say will be the same that the Luigi or better would say so uh, my word is not more important than the other ones the schedule is this one on monday we may have uh, this room or work in the lab depending on the week okay uh, and on thursday we always have these uh, hours here in the in room 8 uh, 8i uh, if you go to the maybe it's time to open the website uh, that is this one the website of the course where you have the, all the information the the, the the important the, probably the most important page here is schedule where uh, day by day we are we have all the planning for the course okay M something might change something may be adjusted but uh, most of it more mostly we already have the plan for for all the semester and uh, uh, you will see that uh, the the um, class is marked with el which is the polytechnical call for lab exercise lab exercise all this er will be in the la display lab they will always be on la, on monday and all the others l and ea will be here in the class in the classroom okay so the first lab the first time we will go to the lab it will be on monday 19 so in two monday from uh, uh, in the second week from today and you you see that some uh, uh, slots are colored and these are the milestones of the course so there are the points i will explain it in, 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 an, in a moment where you have to submit something the green ones where you have to submit some information some document and the yellow ones are where where we give the, the results or the feedback about what you have submitted so every everything is already scheduled and i would say tightly scheduled so it's very important that we all keep our schedule uh, because we we want you know from this point on you see that the last page of the schedule is basically work group so we want to close all the planning phase soon enough that we have at least one full month just to do your project without these boring classes here hmm? and um, the lab uh, is the most important part of the course so if you cannot attend all the classes it's not so uh, bad because we are we are recording them hmm? we are trying to record them if if technical issues don't arise don't but we hope everything was was right uh, but the most important part of the course will be the labs where we actually work and we we, we can talk to you we can give you feedback about what your project what are you doing i think you're you are uh you are you have the wrong approach or we can we can help you solve your problems okay um in the first half of the course uh, the labs will be developing exercises in the classical way so we give you the exercise you try to implement it and so on in the second part uh, you when the your projects are already defined uh, then each group will work on their project we will not want to give extra exercises or whatever to groups that already have their uh, their goal in mind so after that uh, 
the lab hours will be of assisting you with the different troubles that we may have uh, during your group work so the the schedule is actually skewed because you see that at the beginning these are the weeks uh, at the beginning we have more classes and at the end uh, we have more labs uh, and uh, uh, the labs uh, in turn shift uh, from you know given labs to self uh, uh, or to assisted labs uh, with self-work about the project and so as we progress in the semester more time will be devoted to the lab and secondly more time will be devoted to your project and not just to the exercise that, that we have to do here for for learning learning to use uh, new technologies um okay i sent you a, a survey a couple of weeks ago or three uh, for knowing something about you before the beginning of the course and uh, i just want to show you and comment a little bit about the uh, reply that i've gotten not from all of you hmm? i will remember no uh, because there was merely 30 percent of the people who didn't reply uh, but anyway this is the distribution of students uh, in the different courses so 35 out of uh, this morning there were 81 people in the list if i remember correctly so 35 out of 81 is uh, one third more or less are from computer science informatica and uh, one third again is from the wide say electronics and telecommunications area okay so electronics here telecommunications and so on and then there are people also from different uh, uh, backgrounds okay this is good actually because a project is not just coding is designing is thinking is putting together different points of view different points of view and people with different backgrounds uh, can contribute different uh, different ideas of course this is a computer science course okay so you have to like or to love programming and coding and developing that's for sure but having different uh, skills also in the groups uh, will enable you to do kinds of pro or to think about kind of projects that as a pure programmer maybe wouldn't be able to imagine or would be able to solve hmm? so if you have a you know a background in uh, mechanics uh, like uh, one here or here or here then maybe in the, the project may have some no, mechanical or moving parts uh, uh because you have the background of, of, of designing those things or, or using those things huh? um, or something like that hmm? so will be it will be uh you know, not it's not trivial but it will be important to create good groups huh? good teams uh, for for the project that uh, try to mix well the different skills of different people hmm? we will give you some uh, some advice about uh, team forming later today then the question was uh, uh, how do you feel about this uh, knowledge programming in general web programming mobile uh, source control and software requirements so actually the the bus war go, go from one to five so uh, he, most of you are quite you know, feel quite well prepared for general programming so most of you responded three to five of, on this while on the other issues uh, the, the 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 skyscraper is on uh, uh, number one so i don't know actually what you are talking about okay and uh, that's expected that's expected we know what your background is it was just to to um, uh, i imagine that uh, these uh, uh web technologies are maybe people start learning by themselves because it's not uh, formally uh, taught in any course uh, but the others are uh, this is not something that you do on yourself usually and it shows hmm? and the other question was about programming language 
languages so I the same representation here I sorted the language from the most uh, known to the least known according to the, the average of these uh, bars and so we have uh, people who are all of them nearly confident with C Java is, is a um, uh, bimodal distribution to speak as a statistician where the, uh, we have two maxima one on the here and one on there probably it will be the split between who did the Java course in computer science and who come from electronics and other disciplines that only know C but are never being exposed to Java and in the other cases you see the, the skyscraper is always on, on one and means that all the other languages are very are not very well known in this uh, room say and uh, these are the the arrows point to the languages that we will use uh, in the course and the main language we will use will be python which is mostly unknown to everybody good and uh, no but uh, there are good reasons for that um, and uh, we'll do some uh, web uh, uh, front ends uh, using html and javascript so actually python and javascript are something that you will uh, uh, have uh, uh, to learn uh, during this course uh, i put an error also on java because uh, in some cases people want to develop some android application and android today means java or kotlin hmm? and uh, so in that case uh, the arrows are smaller because not all the projects need to do that why do we why did we choose python because uh, it's easy to learn even from even coming from c hmm, you will find a very strong relief coming from c going to python it's an object-oriented programming uh, language so coming from java would be easier but it's much much simpler in terms of syntax uh, in terms of typing in terms of uh, uh, um, data structures and so on a lot of basic data structures are already implemented there you don't need to write uh, 10 lines just to sort a list of numbers um, so it's very um, efficient in writing and uh, relatively simple to, uh, to to learn and mostly it has a, a lot of millions of libraries for nearly everything so if you want to probably uh, you know interface with that beamer with that video projector to control with your application the light uh, intensity of the projector very probably you already you will find a python module interfacing with a sony projector available somewhere hmm? maybe it will be full of bugs or difficult or well or badly documented i don't know but uh, you find a lot of uh, modules that are ready to use uh, for the various kinds of situations especially in this uh, um, embedded devices world sensors and so on and much more than any other language hmm? so the this makes it much easier to interface with everything without needing to to learn or to see the actual protocol that every device implements to be to be controlled hmm? uh, another couple of languages that uh, we will be used in the course are SQL because uh, I forgot to put that in the survey it's my fault uh, because we need to have some database backing up our applications and it's a bash because we in the lab will work mainly on Linux uh, on the raspberries we will program of course under the Linux so uh, uh, the basic knowledge of Linux here uh, is useful so if you're worried don't be uh, because uh, it's the expected situation so this is a survey that we did uh, analysis that we did uh, three years ago about the first two years of the course uh, and these are the results of the questionnaires very similar questions and very similar answers because most of the people felt they have a very low knowledge uh, of everything except uh, programming in general and and C so it's your situation but uh, after the course we checked uh, all the projects that were submitted uh, and which pro and check which project we used uh, which languages so we see that at the end all the 14 projects used uh, python all, all of them used uh, uh, html most of them used uh, javascript and so on hmm? so that means that at the end of the course uh, 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 it's uh, it's perfectly feasible and doable uh, to learn what we need in this way 
okay uh, what do we have to help uh, us and to help you uh, along this path in this course uh, uh, of course uh, the course website the course website will contain all the lecture slides usually in advance hmm? we'll try to publish the slides on the same day or the day before um, the, the classes so that you can have a look before them everything else that we do in the class so if we are doing some exercise here in the class some programming exercise like on Monday we'll start working with Python well exactly what we are typing here will be uh, shared on the website on, on github so at the end of the last lecture we will save it and you can download and see so even if you miss some details you don't see something or whatever you you have the version there so everything that is shown here is also on the website of very type uh, the website shows the deadlines for the different uh, milestones of the, of the course and uh, required readings with this is a, is a new issue that we a new idea that we introduced this year uh, some topics uh, would be boring to tell in the classroom boring for us and boring for you and maybe they are not so difficult but something that we need to learn hmm? so in the uh, this year you, you find and in the schedule you find some R items we will pub, uh, publish more of them and these R's are the readings so something that we give you and you are expected to read uh, on your own before the classes that they are attached to so that you can have already a, a good understanding of a topic uh, and in class it will be better to go deeper or on, the, on more practical issues uh, rather than explaining the comments uh, of the git uh, uh, one by one for example okay so this is something that uh, you need to be to be careful so for, for example for next monday you have this reading of uh, uh, the intelligent environment manifesto that helps us to understand the definition of ambient intelligence that we will discuss together there are just some pages just to, to have a, a quick read about that okay um, all the information about the exams but they will be useful later on when in, in at the end of may we will start thinking about the details of the exam for now we are just getting set up uh, all the news uh, and schedule and so on uh, the video recordings also will be published on uh, on youtube on a playlist so that you can uh, see them on the train or the bus or everywhere and uh, we'll publish also the links there will be a playlist dedicated to that uh, and the links uh, of every single lecture also on the schedule uh, here in this uh, video column we'll put uh, the uh, youtube icon or otherwise there's a playlist here right now it's empty but uh, after the class we will start being populated with the first uh, lecture okay and uh, these are for reference information and then we'll use uh, some social platforms you already know that we have a facebook group uh, for mainly for announcements for ideas for sharing the pictures or something like that some lightweight discussion you are welcome to post to ask questions to share ideas to share oh i found this nice project uh, on on um, you know I, on kickstarter have a look uh, like that just a group of people interested in the to in the topic of ambient intelligence we we'll use youtube for the lectures uh, in the first step we'll use google drive uh, to share the pro the pro proposed projects and the group composition and uh, then we will shift to working on github which is the main platform for open source development uh, worldwide no? i see that a lot of uh, recruiters right now don't ask you from for for your resume or for your curriculum they ask you for your github page uh, to show the work you are doing you have been doing or you are done in the past okay so uh, one important skill that we will use here is to learn to use github uh, our professionals do actually and uh, we are experimenting this year a new way of communication with you through the slack uh, platform does everybody of you already know slack already use that yeah show yourself what 
some units okay and uh, it's a chat platform designed for work chats not for kitten pictures or something like that and um, and we created a group uh, it's called the workspace uh, in, uh, in slack as like it's like that you have uh, there will be all the people here that you can select and chat with uh, or some channels uh, which are sort of groups that are shared between different people different persons okay so we want to try this year to move all the communications here on slack so please don't send us any mail if you have a question ask it on the discussion channel eh? for example i i have a slide uh, with uh, more detailed instructions so you have a link uh, for joining this uh, workspace in, in, uh, in slack uh, the link uh, was sent uh, in the email and it's also on the portal della didattica into the avvisi section into the uh, uh, note session at the beginning use that link uh, to join this group hmm? right now out of 81 people you only have uh, i don't remember where to see it uh, by the world uh, less than 40 people joined so how do you use this oh uh, these are it's like as a website where you can connect uh, and write and read uh, as a desktop application as a mobile application for tablets uh, uh, smartphones or whatever so it's uh, actually you can use it from everywhere you have no excuses and um, the idea is uh, we we don't use emails because in the last years you sent an email or oh, um, one of, one of the problems is that uh, i don't know why but students don't use reply to all so uh, you send an email with somebody in copy they reply only to one of them and so very difficult to keep track uh, uh, of, of the conversation so, okay so we centralize the conversation here and there will be three main channels no? as i shown here channels discussion general random here on the left the general channel is a channel well where only we can write okay you are not allowed to write messages there it will be for announcements reminders notes links or communication that we want to give to everybody so that will be so a polished list uh, of announcements or communications okay is there will be no discussion there the discussion channel on the other hand is open to everybody so you are welcome to ask questions to give ideas to open discussions or whatever in that channel is open to you especially something related to the course okay we will read uh, all the messages there and we respond to each one of them okay so that is the way if you want to ask a question write the question there okay maybe some other students already knows the answer so it's open yeah, it's a it's a chat so everybody can respond uh, we will keep an eye and we'll uh, give uh, you know the right also the right answer or correct some mistakes or uh, do some so that would be i think the the most important channel then there is a random channel as the name says it's just uh, you know for any other kind of free discussion joke jokes or whatever or, or whatever you feel sharing or information that you come through or a seminar for a friend or whatever okay something that does not need to be responded or does not need to be considered seriously hmm? in on top of that it's possible to create new channels there's a plus here create a channel and my suggestion would be to create a channel for every group for every team channels can be private so you create a channel and you decide only the people that will be able to see that channel so that will be a private communication room for the group persons we will not see it so you can write even bad things about us it will be private uh, we know you do so uh, uh, we um, it will be a, a tool for coordinating your work uh, on the on the on the project okay so that will be totally on your own hmm? slack allows that you create a channel and the, the first question will be will be the channel public or private you create a pri uh, private one and then you list the people 
who are to be joined into that channel okay so that's for communication for development uh, we will learn uh, next week uh, to use uh, github github uh, is a, a website uh, uh, used for sharing uh, for the collaborative development uh, of software where you can share your source code and other people can work on the same source code together by avoiding conflicts uh, of different people modifying the same files and so on so there's a very rigid protocol for uh, making changes uh, and making uh, um, you know, merging the changes from different people into one consistent project so this is something that happens every day the open source world is you know ma managed by this uh, uh, website uh, there are a lot of libraries tools uh, already available there that you can use see forks means make, make a copy and use on your own and we will use that also in our um, in our course for our development my suggestion is you learn to use it well and you start using it for everything related to your life to your career okay your projects and something anything you can start putting it there so you learn it uh, uh, well hmm? and use also for working on the project i don't want anybody to see i sent you a zip file via email of the la of the last version of the project okay zip files emails usb keys are evil are bad are, are satan are uh, they break everything every time okay they don't work they create more problems we have a platform that is professionally for sharing and developing software in a group uh, we start to learn using that okay the next time you lose something because you saved it in your usb key i will laugh uh, from here to there and uh, <laughs> and it happens hmm? and if i say it, it because it happened so um so practically first of all create a github account uh, the idea is that think of this account not something for the course uh, but uh, for your career so choose a good nickname in the last years uh, a lot of people that uh, use their matricular number from Tom Politecnico and it's very sad because it means that their, their life is uh, Politecnico I please don't believe that and uh, um, choose a name that, that can last uh, even because next year in the in the best of the case it will change the matricula so uh, so use a nickname that lasts first but when registering use the, the official uh, email address from Polytechnic. you can change it later of course but if you register with a Polytechnic address you will have uh, a free access to the full uh, platform so there will be a discount for students for teachers and so on and if you go to this page and you enter your, uh, the, the, the data of the account you registered, they will give you free repositories. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of GitHub, I won't spend too much time uh, on this, but uh, is that it's free for everybody as long as your projects are public. So if you want uh, to create 100 projects on GitHub, it's free if these projects are visible by everybody, are public. If you want to keep something private for you, you have to pay. Okay? You have to pay if you want to develop something professionally, so that sh shouldn't be shown to everybody. So if you want to work, work in open source only, then it's free. If you want to work on professional issues, then you have to pay. Except when you're a student, where you can have private repositories for free. Okay? If you use uh, an official address here just remember that when you will no longer be a student those repository will become public huh? so either you pay or you delete them but it's a long time for now and um, so this will create an account on your name a private account that you can use for everything even unrelated from the course then as soon as the teams are defined and the projects are defined we will create uh, specific repositories for the pro course where you can work uh, inside uh, the group which is MEA 2018 uh, one repository one, air, one work area per every group okay so that's why we are asking to get a github account as soon as possible so that you can start working and we have the, your, the nickname that you choose uh, to 
to, um, to give you access to these repositories. Okay, there will be a reading next week, uh, a document for learning the basics of Git and GitHub, and then we'll see using that uh, into the class uh, if you, uh, just to, to learn the workflow to use uh, this kind of platform. Always commit your intermediate work, okay? Always before shutting off the computer, always save the work on the computer and on GitHub. Because the next time you power up your computer, it will not start up. The hard disk will be, will be broken. Uh, it happens, okay? Remember, always save your work on the external account. Okay, uh, this is uh, that's all basically about the material. There are no textbooks. Uh, that cover the same the, the, this crazy set of information uh, we'll try just to share to give you all the information that we have uh, and we hope uh, um, it's enough and we are always open to to um, to to come after you if you have any questions or any any issue or whatever um, at the same time there's some software that we are going to use uh, these are the four main uh, points to start with so before Monday when we have the first uh, practical work uh, you should have installed uh, in your computer whether it's a uh, windows or linux or mac computer uh, it's all these tools are cross-platform python python 3 uh, uh, in python 3 we are going to use python 3 not python 2 so check your with your system uh, we as an editor we will use a jet uh, pie chance uh, from the JetBrains company so download PyCharm Professional. Again, PyCharm comes in three editions, Community, Education, and Professional. As a student, uh, you have a free license uh, for the professional version. So go for it, uh, go for the professional, and register with your email on the website uh, of JetBrains uh, to get a free license on all their products uh, as long as you're a student. Hmm? Uh, then you need Git, uh, for interfacing with github for storing so it, uh, maybe it's better to install git before pycharm because pycharm uses git and recognizes whether it's uh, is installed and the database uh, like for example mariadb on the course web page uh, you have more um, detailed in instructions here on development resources with the links uh, that, that directly bring you to that to the download page uh, in case uh, it's too difficult for you to use google um okay some words about the exam the exam uh, is uh, where we check uh, whether you learned how to design and implement uh, these mei projects we will filter the project at the beginning so in the first month uh, we will work with you to define which are the good projects okay you have an idea we say this is good this is not good it can be improved and so on so at the end of the first month you have a an idea of a, of a project which is validated by us so it's not a surprise at the end then the matter is designing and implementing that idea hmm. um, so uh, and the kind of exam also tries to take into account that many of you are not from here so they will they will go home uh, soon or it will not be here in september and so we'll try to do everything possible to have uh, most of you close this exam in this summer season okay that's why we have a lot of work to do during the semester and we ought to have the exam immediately in june or july because all the work is already mostly done during the course during the semester hmm? um, and the idea is that the exam is uh, consists uh, exactly in the evaluation of the group work there's nothing extra we are not going to ask you nasty questions about python i don't care okay if you don't know something you use google or you read a book when you need it uh, i want to uh, see what you did uh, with your projects uh, the results you achieved uh, the um, how you solved uh, the problems and the issues that you found during the development uh, we will what what method uh, and we all take which technologies in if you define a, a sound architecture or something that is just crazy and it works for chains and so on and so the idea is that uh, uh, we approve the topics and then you work uh, and uh, in the exam we will check the documents that you will upload so during the intermediate deadlines we will ask you to create a simple website uh, with the information about your project 
in three different steps at the exam uh, for every step we will give you a feedback about okay this can be improved this is, uh, is not clear and so on you are free to consider or not uh, our feedbacks uh, we will not uh, get angry during the course uh, but during the exam we will read everything again and give a score part of the score will be about on the on the documentation that you provided to the, to the project and the other part of the score at the exam will be the presentation so it will be a presentation maybe with slides and with a practical demo of your project hmm? so it will be everything about your project hmm? the exam is about your project not about our uh, ideas or whatever this will be the path that we follow so the first step will be defining the theme of the project uh, there's something that i'm trying to do in the next uh, half an hour or less and uh, then you have to submit uh, to think about some ideas that fit this theme this topic uh, and uh, uh, submit your initial idea and the composition of the group that you want to work with you have to form groups of three or four people and uh, after that uh, we will discuss the ideas so you have submit on google drive i will send you the link later and we discuss the ideas uh, and we have uh, still one week uh, to finalize the group composition and the uh, and the topics okay so by the 23rd of march uh, every uh, one of you already has uh, uh, the, the title of the topic de of the project defined and the group defined hopefully and uh, we have uh, we here we have the um, the easter vacations and right after easter vacation you have to submit the first deliverable which is just half a page in which you describe the vision of your project what is it to be after that uh, we have an evaluation a feedback on that in the lab and in may you have to submit the architecture of the system so the design document and we give a feedback on that after that you just have to work uh, during the lab or in free access on your own in the ladisp whenever you want uh, before the exam where we evaluate actually the result of the project hmm? and after that we organize the the showcase so it will be everything will be very tiring for for both of you and us but uh, we hope uh, it would also be rewarding hmm? okay <clears throat> details about this time will come later the first step is uh, identifying a, a group three or four people possibly with mixed skills okay people from different backgrounds mixed into the same group to have a better a wider view uh, on the different uh, aspects of the project and uh, at all costs avoid all non-programmers group so a group with uh, all the we, we don't have any architect this year so i can i can say that a group with four architects uh, uh, i have nothing against them but uh, is not very fit for this kind of project okay so uh, if uh, you are not very confident in your programming try to mix with other groups uh, when you can give uh, a different kind of contribution everybody has to learn of course the basics but once is something you are learning uh, and some uh, other things are when you are already uh, a good background on the topic uh, so try to exploit uh, the mm, multidisciplinarity of this class and start thinking about ideas and uh, think of them among you maybe post them into slack we are thinking about this is it crazy or not uh, and we try to have you know as more as much discussion uh, discussion as possible hmm, bef uh, before we try to uh, finalize on some uh, uh, some ideas that will uh, bring us to the end of the course uh, the idea is that start today or yesterday thinking about the projects uh, don't aim too high we don't want to do something spectacular or too complex with many different features something that is already good and is already interesting with a small set of features then it can be expanded with many more if we have time but at least uh, try to find a minimum set of features that is already significant hmm? and uh, always ask huh? we will spend a lot of time discussing with you so we have 60 hours in the class 
but we, we, we always spend more than twice uh, after hours in via emails and so on that's uh, that's, uh, that's expected that's not a problem uh, we are open for discussing we are three people you can we can share this this kind of log and uh, when you ask for a suggestion maybe try to listen also to them because sometimes uh, uh, people just to ask for confirmation hmm? i have this idea is it good no but i had this idea i think it's good no it isn't and so on we go um uh, okay and exploit the lab uh, as much as possible um i want to but uh, i i can show you some examples from the last years uh, but i don't have time now so i will shift it to next week uh, if you want to browse, uh, uh, all the previous projects are published in, on these websites. Uh, so you can go and see the, the final website, the presentation videos of these groups and so on. Uh, we will comment some of them later on. But uh, today I want to spend some time in defining the topic of this year. So every year, to avoid the repetition of the, different, of the same projects or the same ideas, uh, we define a different topic. Uh, last year it was uh, sustainability so two years ago it was health and well-being uh, three years ago it was the smart campus this year is uh, ambient intelligence for living spaces living spaces are so an ambient you, we want to build an ambient intelligence system for a living space what is a living space is the environment in which you live in which you spend your time not where you work not where you travel where you live it can be for what what is this intelligence systems for it's up to you here you have some ideas some suggestions for energy optimization for comfort for entertainment music games videos for security for safety parting huh? i have a party in my house because of the house is intelligent for lighting so again why not for cleaning we did a survey some years ago about people there was one simple question the survey was uh, at thousands of replies um this one simple question if your home were intelligent what would you ask to your home and uh, 70 percent of the responses were about cleaning i want the house to clean itself okay and uh, <coughs> to make the beds uh, uh, the morning and so on hmm? uh, so that's maybe not everything is feasible it's easy to do but it's a an interesting domain of course uh, for working maybe you're working at home you're studying at home so it can be improved that uh, for our oh, entertainment is twice because ye i was tired yesterday so probably this word was popping up in my mind quite frequently for playing for kids family with kids the intelligence how can the intelligence of the home help playing help uh, manage the kids the gardening in indoor outdoor relaxed moment music sleeping we spend a lot of hours too few actually sleeping while sleeping so I, how can an intelligent system help us in some of this so i try to give all, only some ideas my message is try to widen your thought not just managing the energy bill that's boring something that could be engaging with the users okay not optimizing the temperature or closing the windows while i'm out okay that's that seems too simple think about different scenarios ah today i want to go home hand and my house helps me in preparing dinner having a chat with my friends playing cards i don't know taking a shower hmm? every moment action of our daily life can be improved can be made better probably not all of them i don't know and uh, living spaces are made of different sub spaces can be the house an independent house or can be a small apartment or a shared shared apartment like many students have or a residence in there some university students 
these are all living spaces they are totally different in terms of the type of, the, of behaviors that you have it's not just a volume length by height by by uh, white and no the the activity that you are doing in that volume that counts that is different depending on the context so there may be different projects maybe the, the topic would be mm, i don't know entertainment or playing or if you are a house if you have a shared flat if you have an, uh, in, uh, an apartment for you or it's shared or if you have a full house it will be different in a residence you have some private spaces and some common spaces both count hmm? maybe you have even more or there are spaces for cooking spaces for living for sleeping the bathrooms i didn't list the bedroom because i don't know whether um, you can make any projects uh, and be able to present them but it's also a possibility <laughs> uh, garage i don't know that the the cellar or or some space for studying um again try to mix uh, the location with the activity with the type of user that is doing that activity in that location you have thousands of combinations okay and uh, what kind of projects are we aiming at well we will discuss in depth this picture next monday the idea is that an ambient intelligence system always must have these four components of course there is a user and so that we need some interaction with the user the user must be able to control to see to interact with command send comments uh, receive feedback or whatever from the system you need some interface this interface may be just a button on the wall for example or or a natural interface with gesture lights or with voice or with a um, tablet or whatever but the user has needs to have some way of interacting with the system so for example a system for optimizing the energy in the house doesn't need any interaction so it's not a good project for the ambient intelligence process, uh, course because it's just uh, optimizing a technical plant a, techni a machine okay we do you don't need to interact with your fridge the fridge will go on and off with the, the cycle it has its own intelligence but it's not in, in, it's intelligent from the point of view of a machine of a device it's not intelligent from the point of view of the interaction with the user we don't need to tell the fridge now we can you can switch home because no we just rely on the fact that its internal workings are optimized that's it but it gives nothing to us as humans in our behavior in our life right so the interaction part something that needs to interact with the user something that needs to sense the user sensing something sensing the temperature the lights the the, the presence uh, the the smell i don't know the uh last year we had some a project about bananas going bad and uh, say so was the gas sensor sensing the smell and uh, so just be open uh, don't be limited about the technology you know now there really are thousands of different devices that can be used think about the users the ideas about something that today cannot be done or is not done but could be done then we will try to solve technical issues later okay try let's try to dream for a moment okay so we have to sense something so some part of the system will have to capture some information from the environment or from the user usually the sensors are either on the environment or worn by the user like watches or, or necklaces or bracelets or something like that usually mm, not necessarily you can put also that on, on your cat for example no? which is not the direct user but you want to monitor that or or something or sensor that moves throughout the house i don't know why not a robotic sensor that goes and takes pictures i don't know what for but it could be done 
but for necessarily some sensing feature is needed otherwise why, why why is it needed because otherwise the user will need to command every action from the interface that's not intelligence something that when i push a button the light is which wrong that's not intelligence it's just command i want the system to be able to sense the need of doing something it needs to be understand on its on its own which is the situation in this moment and then reason about this data so if this if the user is at home and the temperature is that and the cat is, in, uh, is outside and the kids are sleeping then no? putting together the, the data that i have the information that i have uh, to decide what an intelligent system should do now and uh, once i decided that and this reasoning is of course algorithms software acting changing something closing the door opening a window switching a light playing a music uh i don't know acting on the uh, in in this course will be having an effect a physical effect uh, onto the environment uh, onto the user you know you have a, if you have a bracelet you make it vibrate is an action something that changes the status of the environment or changes the status of the user uh, user a special kind of glasses you make them dark for example i don't know uh, because they're playing or whatever so it's an action that changes the environment the room the lights the temperature the window the doors uh, a robot that moves uh, or changes the user something some device the state of some device attached to the user this uh, acting and sensing make the pair for closing the loop uh, between you know, that we saw before between the user and the environment so the user has actually two ways of interacting with an mei system one is through explicit interfaces interacting and the other is through natural interaction with the environment by using the environment by living in the environment by acting naturally in my environment the environment is reacting or sometimes it can also anticipate me i'm sitting on the sofa and then the tv switch on and the lights are changed well, this is a very stupid scenario it's too predefined to be intelligent doesn't need reasoning just needs one rule one application rule so try to think about something that would be you know uh, futuristic mm. set, try to set it into the future then we'll try to make it feasible but at least have a good idea and try to make this idea easy to explain to somebody who is not in technology you can you should be able to s explain it to you to your sister or brother if he's studying philosophy for example or uh, to your grandmother or and they will say ah i want it i understand it they don't need to understand how it works they only need to understand what it does and then and they want it and they would and they should say i want it i would like to have it i would like to pay for having it that would be the best response okay and uh, even if it's not required in this course it gives you a good sense of uh, um okay Queen, so try to think about uh, what the system does to the user not what the system does inside okay we discussed that among us engineers how the system is working for now what the system does i don't want to hear any word about technology in the next month from any of you okay if i hear the word smartphone bluetooth uh, raspberry uh, arduino sensor or what i will shut my ears off okay i only want to hear about users environments rooms uh, behaviors and so on it's difficult but it's the key for having a project whose function is clear and whose technology will be designed later as a consequence of this uh, need of closing the loop between these four areas projects will not be up mobile apps no 
may, may, may include one, but it's not the app. No mobile only project. No project where the only essence is a mobile application. No software only. What is the acting if it's all software? We need some, act, some actuator. No cloud only. No wearable only. No hardware only. No embedded only projects. But a mixture of this. Then we need some interface, some sensor, some actuator, and some embedded system to control everything. Okay? So we, if you're saying, I thought about an application out of the door. Um, not totally automated behind the scenes solution. Uh, something that opt optimizes everything. Okay, that would be interesting, but it's not an ambient intelligence system because it doesn't interact with the user. It improves, makes better the machine. It doesn't make better the user. Hmm? So one of the questions would be, and why the user should care? Should involve sensing, should involve actuation, this is what we already said, but it's better to repeat that. And uh, should not be simply deterministic, not just applying a rule, everything I sense this, act that. It should need, should have some adaptation, some intelligence, some personalization, and so on. This is probably, in many projects, difficult to achieve uh, because for having personalization, you need to collect a lot of data to determine the user habits and so on. In, in the prototypes, it will be difficult to, act, to collect uh, realistic data. So probably this intelligence will be in some way faked uh, in our projects. But in the vision, it should be there. Hmm? In the idea, it should be there, even if we, if we don't implement it actually. Of course, we are open to use everything, as we said, every sensor that is in the market, every actuator, every service that is in the cloud. A lot of, the, today there's a really, a huge offer of services that you can access online and do some part of the computation, the storage, the interface, uh, uh, the notification for you. We can use them, of course. Of course, it's not be, and, and they can also act as a sort of a virtual sensor. I want to know the temperature. I can put a temperature sensor outside or I can ask some weather service that gives me that information without having to deploy an actual sensor. It's okay. It's a way of getting that information. It's the information that I'm interested in, not the physical sensor, of course. So we can use that as long as they are not the only sensor actuator, because otherwise they would be disconnected from the actual environment. And we want to improve the environment, not having a new cloud application. Okay. Um, The last slide, then we'll, you know, next Monday we'll start again and try to, uh, after you thought a bit about uh, uh, some ideas, uh, we try to uh, be more, more specific. Uh, but the next step will be by the 18th of this month, so it's 10 days from, from today, from now, uh, uploading on, on this go Google document, uploading the, your group composition. So you, we propose we are these four, three or four people and give you an idea, a title and a short description. Okay, so in this 10 day, we try to have an open discussions among you with us uh, about possible ideas. And the format for submission is simple. It's just this one, cut and paste this part onto the Google Doc. Three or four team members, email, GitHub username for each of them, and the role in the project. Are you working on hardware, on software? on the actuation, on the sensors, I don't know. Tentative, because we don't have already the details of the project. But just to understand for us that the projects are, sorry, sorry for the, the, the teams are balanced in some way from the point of view of the, of the competence. An acronym, a title, and the description. Five to 10 lines, not 20, not two, five to 10 lines. Describing the project from the user's point of view. Go home and repeat 100 times from the user's point of view. From the user's point of view. In, in your way home, on the tram, eh, people will say they're crazy, but from the user's point of view. Uh, don't mention technologies nor devices, okay? Try to do this effort. 
this will be what we are asking from you in 10 days okay these are some details about that the user point of view of what are the benefits of the, for the user how would you explain it to a person that doesn't understand a word about technology but they understand about their life what they are doing what are their problems so how do you solve their problems okay why should they want it how does it blend into their life is it an additional burden to do or something that relieves them helps them okay so these are the kind of direction which we have to think uh, crossing with the activities crossing with the locations that we shown before and you try to propose some ideas we will discuss them uh, after the 18 of course about your ideas if you po possibly be creative ex if you have a skill a passion something that since you were a kid you always, you always thought about something try to craft a project around your passion okay um, focus on the two three main key features don't think of something uh, sometimes people are thinking to add many features because the the first ones are not convincing enough okay if the first three are not convincing enough uh, the project is not convincing you you, 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 may, you may add how many you want but it will always be you, it will uh, always be a non-convincing project so try to work on those to make them more convincing more compelling more interesting for the users okay and uh, try to avoid too much complexity hmm? okay we don't uh, we are not thinking about technology but if i already start seeing something that requires ten thousand lines of code uh, i would try to make it simpler huh? because uh, because of time we only have uh, 60 hours plus the nights that you have uh, to complete the project uh, so try to keep it simple focused uh, interesting uh, and nice okay that's all for me this evening thank you and uh, we'll meet again on monday but we can contact uh, uh, over slack uh, all over the week thank you